everyone, it's Kelsey at scrapbook.com and today I'm going to show you some really fun techniques on how to use up all of your washi tapes. 12 different ways to washi. So we're going to check out some super fun samples and tutorial ideas and you can start incorporating all of your amazing washi tape into your scrapbooking. Way to washi number one is creating flags. So your own toothpick flags or other types of flag embellishments become really, really easy with a couple of inexpensive toothpicks and washi tapes. And all you need to do, of course, is just take a strip of washi, however long you'd like your flag to be, um, double it roughly. Again, I'm just gonna do this all by sight. I'm gonna sort of find my center point and I'm gonna fold it around my toothpick. I'm gonna try and line up the edges as best I can so it looks like a flag. And washi is transparent, and so you will see a little bit of your pattern from either side leak through. Again, if you're a real strong perfectionist, you may want to line up your pattern or know how long your flag needs to be in order to get your two sides to line up. And then I'm just going to figure out which way I want my flag to face. If it matters, it probably doesn't ultimately matter. And I'm just going to cut in my point on my flag. Okay, you can also make rounded flags. So I'll show you a few more, just different washi, different toothpicks. You can do colored toothpicks, you can do standard raw toothpicks. Kind of play with it, have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, you can do the flag right up at the tippy top of the toothpick. You can do it halfway down. Um, you can leave a little post at the top like I did on this one here. So just leave yourself open to creativity. And again, these are so simple to make. And this one I'll just kind of round off instead of making a point. Okay, and let's do one more really quick. Just show you a couple of different styles of washi that you're seeing here. Some fun colors and just how simple this number one way to washi is, creating your own flags. And this way you can really customize your scrapbook pages. If you are missing an embellishment and you think that you need just a little something extra on a page, you can create one of these flags and you'll have your own embellishment in just minutes. Way to washi number two is to create your own banner page element or border for um, scrapbook layouts, projects, mini book covers, anything you can think of using just simple twine and a few strips of washi. So let's dive right in. You can use hemp, jute, twine, ribbon, um, anything. I like that the twine is nice and thin and it's kind of already round and rolled and so it makes it really easy just to get your washi pieces around it. And again, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a strip of washi. You can kind of see a faint pattern on here of lace. And I have four sort of coordinating washies, if you will, and I'm gonna use them to create a cohesive banner. And all I'm gonna do is place this down on a non-stick. So I'm working on just a office mat. You can do this on your non-stick craft mat. Um, you can even do it on a table. Washi is really, really, really forgiving. Um, it's repositionable, so you don't have to worry about it getting permanently stuck to anything. It's very workable. And I'm just using these varieties of tapes going to make a pattern. I'm leaving a little bit of space in between each strip and I'm not sticking them down real hard because I am gonna need to pull them up. But I'm kind of making them all about the same length. I'm really not a perfectionist and I'm not looking for any particular pattern. As a matter of fact, I might even make it random. So once I've put out all four of the styles I'm using, instead of going back to the lace doily and starting over, I might pick up anything else in my stash here and just keep going random. 
down the way. And again, I'm just gonna make a few more of these strips to show you, and then we will put it all together and you'll see the finished product. Okay, so let's go with that. And now just kind of gently peel up on either end. And as you peel up, I would start to fold. It makes it really easy to work with. And you're just folding the washi back on top of itself. Again, it is transparent, so you're gonna see a little bit of your design from one side bleed into the design on the back side. Um, but I think that's what kind of makes it unique. And you can see how forgiving this stuff really is. You can just pull it apart. So if you don't get it together perfectly straight or if like mine it's kind of slipping and I'm losing some of the space in between my banner pieces <laughs> you can unstick it restick it whatever you need to do to get it to where you are happy and satisfied with it and I will try and just work fast here you get the idea And I just kind of squeeze some of the bubbles out of it. If I get one that's a little bit bubbly or wrinkly, I just try to push or squeeze the little bubbles out of it. Again, I'm not a massive perfectionist, but if you wanna go back and fix it, um, again, it's so easy to pull apart and just redo. Okay. We have just a, oops, and I ripped that one. But here's the thing about washi. You can just take it off and you can start with a new piece right where you left off because again, it is repositionable. So just grab another piece. It's a quick and easy fix. And maybe what I'll do is start from this other end since I have a little bit more forgiveness over here and we'll just peel it up with our twine and fold it over. And sorry if it's kind of hard to see on this angle. Okay, and then I'm just pinching it together. It's sticking to itself really well. And my last piece will go together. Okay, and then essentially you have a little banner. Now, looks kind of rough around the edges, right? So all we need to do is go in and decide what type of style we want our banner to be, whether we want to do rounded like we did on the flags or pointed like an arrow, or if we want to make it sort of more of that flag um, where the point comes up in the middle. And so that's what I'm going to do on this one. And again, I'm just cutting in from one of the corners. Um, and here you can see I've kind of got a lot of sticky washi down here. I didn't quite get it folded in half on itself. So that's gonna kind of dictate where I start to make my cuts. I wanna start my cuts where the washi is actually adhered together and there's not any loose washi sticking out. And that way I'm guaranteed my banner will stay together. And it won't look like it has any loose scraggly ends. Okay, and again, this stuff is really forgiving. If you make a mistake and you totally botch one of these points as you're trying to cut it, just rip the entire piece of washi off the twine and start over. It's really not intimidating. But this way, if you have a pink, black, and white layout, you've just created your own custom pennant banner to line a photo or the corner of your layout or um, a fun embellishment for a card. So there you have it. The third way to washi is to make a fun sunburst pattern, which is really trendy right now, on a piece of pattern paper and to use it for a background or a photo mat on a scrapbook page. So what I'm going to show you here with this sort of plain generic uh, piece of pattern paper, I'm going, I've made a dot in the center so that I know where my center point is. I will later cover that dot with a fun button where all of my washies meet. Um, but what I'm going to do in the meantime is just show you how you can take any pattern of washi, whatever your favorite is, and sort of create a sudden burst off to one side. Um, again, this is just super simple. I'm actually gonna go in Roy G. Biv order or rainbow order. Um, so red. And I'm gonna just track this right out to the point I'm gonna line it up sort of even over my center point. So my center point, if you can still see it, is right inside that white dot. And I am just going to smooth this outward 
And again, I'm working on a non-stick surface, so I recommend, you know, anything table or office mat or um, non-stick craft mat will be just fine. Washi is removable and does not stick to surfaces. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around in order um, of a rainbow. So I'm just going to sort of find my center point again. You can leave some of the green in the background um, from the pretty pattern paper, or you can go right over the top of it, or you can kind of mix it up. Um, I am kind of just going to freestyle this. Again, I'm still paying attention, see, to this white um, area. This little white dot right here has my black mark still in the center of it. I'm going to go ahead and pull this one, which is a little bit less translucent, out. I'm going to leave some of the green. And then I will just continue to kind of go around. And I'm only gonna do my pattern on half of a page. Uh, you guys can do it on as much of a page as you want. I'm working on a six by six piece of paper right now. You can work on a much larger surface. You can do this on an entire 12 by 12. Okay, the only thing to continue to do is to track it back to this middle area here because we're going to want to kind of cover all of this mumbo jumbo. And you'll see now I've kind of established a pattern for myself that I'm wanting to kind of follow and actually I might leave my green showing there again. And I'm just going to keep going around and making a fun sunburst. But you can see how we're taking a very simple piece of pattern paper now and turning it into something really vibrant and really fun. And again, I had separation up here between my orange and my yellow washi. I'm just gonna keep that pattern kind of going. And actually I'm gonna work a little bit backwards now and come back up because I only wanna do half of the sheet. Um, and I am going to come back up and start with my pink. And there was green between the pink and the red in my pattern down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure there's green in between up here. I don't want any pattern showing here through the paper. And since I really like these anchors anyways, let's go ahead and just make one more valiant effort to get them on the page as well. Okay, and then in looking at this, I kind of see I've extended a little bit over half the page and I do kind of want this to be um, symmetrical. So I'm gonna go straight back down with my blue onto this yellow again so that those two meet up. Okay, and now what I would do is if this was going to be my sunburst pattern, I can either cut this off um, and use this as a small page element, or I can put a photo here um, and use my sunburst exterior as sort of the focal point. But for this tutorial, what I want to do is I want to kind of show you how you can clean it up. So I'm actually going to just glue a button down in the center of this. But before I do that, let's actually just lift this up off of your nonstick surface. And what you can do is just fold these over. You don't need to cut them off. It's not like traditional pattern paper where if you try to fold it backwards or ribbon it gets really bulky. You may want to cut off your corners. Those are a little bit of an exception there. But for the most part, you can just fold really, really quickly. And then just cut off your corners from the back side, they're a little bit easier to see. So snip those like so, and you have your beautiful sunburst, and then you're going to put your button embellishment in the center. Um, and again, you can kind of play with this and move it off. You can use a larger button to cover more of a surface area. I'm going to just put mine right here because that kind of encompasses and brings together all of my ends. And again, if I really thought that was kind of tacky, I can put a photo here um, or I can just cut off this entire piece and just use this upper portion. But you can see that on just one small six by six, you can turn it several different ways and get several different looking effects with just this one embellishment.
And again, you can be working on 12 by 12, eight and a half by 11, six by six, or even a card front. But that's a sunburst. Technique number four for using washi tape is covering plain clothespins. So I just would like to show you some different washi tapes and how you can mount it on one or both sides of a naked clothespin. Um, I happen to have uh, purchased black ones, but you can purchase the natural um, raw ones, or you may have ones that have a design on them that you don't particularly like. And depending on the style and how translucent the washi tape is, you can actually cover up the design you don't like in order to salvage an embellishment that you may not otherwise use into something that you really, really love. So obviously this technique is super easy and super fast, you guys. I'm just going to take, um, because my clothespins are black, um, I've decided to just kind of stick with a black and gray theme. And I chose some of my black and gray tapes here. And all you're going to do is start at one end. And if you have a pretty clean rip on your washi, that's a really good start. Um, I can never cut a straight line, so I don't rely on that too much. And then you're just gonna stick your washi a little bit over the edge of your clothespin. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm, I am leaving a little tiny bit over the lip of my clothespin. And then I'm pulling it straight down one side because obviously I know that one side of my washi tape is straight and I don't have to worry about cutting it straight. So I'm lining it up on the straight edge of my clothespin and that way one entire side of my clothespin is done for me and I don't have to worry about the straight line. And then I'm just gonna rip off and I'm gonna have some excess. So if I flip my clothespin over, you'll notice I need to cut around these three sides. I really prefer my Tim Holtz serrated tonic scissors for this, just because they're very precise and you seem to be able to get a nice cut that is very close to the edge. There's not a whole lot of fluff on these scissors, so they go right to the edge of things. So I'm just going to put this right to the edge of my clothespin and slice. And you'll see when I turn it over, it's a perfectly straight edge because I'm using the clothespin as a guide. And I'll just do that again on the other side. Line it up as best I can to get in there so that when I flip it over, it's flush. And finally, on the third and longest side, I'll do the exact same thing. And again, I'm just using this as a guide you may want to keep your scissor points behind the metal. Um, you'll have to cut around the metal just a little bit, but it shouldn't look too funky from the front. And if it does, what you can do is just kind of peel up the washi a little bit with your finger and take your scissors and kind of put them on an angle and just slice off that little bit of excess. And typically with really pointy and nice sharp scissors, you can get in there and do so. So there you go, a covered clothespin. And I'll show you real quick one more time with a different tape here, just so you can see the procedure. So again, I'm just lining it up to one edge. And actually, the edge of this washi is printed kind of funky, so I'm gonna line it up with the opposite edge. So again, washi tape, Removable, very forgiving, so easy to work with, you guys. I know some of you have probably owned it for a really long time and have just been baffled by how to use it. I know that I was, and it wasn't until I started researching to teach you some of these fun ways to washi that I actually discovered many of them myself. And I'm definitely excited at the possibilities here. Okay, so now we're just making our three cuts along the edge of our clothespins. We might need to turn it over and do a tiny bit of finish work, but this one actually looks pretty good. And there you have it. The fifth way to washi is to punch any type of a shape that you have from a washi tape background. So what I've done here is I've just taken a sheet of six by six paper from a paper pad that I am not really gonna use, so to me it's kind of a scrap. 
And I've decided that I like the white side because I love this pink polka dot washi. Um, again, washi tape doesn't, um, you know, the rolls of washi tape don't offer a whole sheet of this, so you do have to kind of line up your pattern. So I'd like to show you on this plain white scrap piece as well, just a quick tutorial of how to line up your pattern so that you can get punching. So just start with your washi design and just start pulling pieces and then line up your design as close as you can so that these sort of chevron lines just continue and it will almost look seamless depending on how able you are um, to get those right next to each other and to keep the pattern going. Now I'm doing this upside down so I apologize if it's not perfect but you guys will have the ability to focus a little bit more on getting this right up next to the design. And you can sort of see now how the design will just continue all the way down your page. And then this is what you will use to punch. So that's exactly what I did here with the polka dots as well. And I'm just using a plain old circle punch. You can use any shape you want. This can be a butterfly or a Christmas tree or a square or a circle or flower. Um, anything you want, but I'm going to flip my punch over so I can see where to line up the design with my washi and I'm just going to give it an easy squeeze and suddenly I have a really cute circle embellishment with washi tape and a scrap piece of paper. So not only am I using scraps that I wouldn't use otherwise, but I'm getting these really cute circle embellishments that I can add to any layout, card, or project in just a few simple steps. Ways to washi, number six and seven, is stamping on washi tape and journaling on washi tape. So way to washi number six, stamping, I'm gonna show you with some of these fun uh, American Crafts Dear Lizzie stamps and this actual K and Company branded Smash stamp how to stamp on some of your washi tapes. So here, I just grabbed a scratch piece of paper for this demo and I ripped off some of the fun smash tape, for, also from K & Company, uh, that I thought warranted some journaling. And you can actually just journal on any tape. Um, this one, for example, is a Glitz Design tape and you'll see it's got a space for numbers on it. Um, but you can take this and put it on anything and you can either journal a number in if that pertains to your Carter layout uh, or you could use something maybe that is lined um, like this is kind of diagonally lined and you could put this on a project and then write um, inside or outside or on two or three of the diagonal lines in a diagonal fashion you could add a date or a sentiment, or you could just do a ton of journaling on this. You could make an entire page out of washi tape to journal on. But I thought these were fun to show you. And I'm going to use stays on ink just because it's really permanent and washi tape is kind of slick in most cases. So I'll start up here. And this is a uh, what, where, when, and why piece of washi. And it is really this thick. I haven't combined anything. So it's about an inch tall. Um, and then this little section happens to be about two inches wide. And my why is going to be because you're awesome. Okay, so I'm going to just line this up and stamp right here. Okay, just like that. And this is stays on, so it should dry pretty quickly. And then what I've done on the Cane Company one is I want to do the what but on the Cane Company one, because it's double-sided and it has a phrase and a date, is I've actually taken a scrap piece of washi and I'm just going to use it to cover the side of the stamp that I don't want to actually be inked when I go to press down. And that way I'm just inking this one side of the stamp. And then I don't have to worry about whether I'm going over too far on my ink pad. Um, I can try to stay, obviously, to one side of my ink pad, but I don't want to mess it up, so just in case. All right, and then my what is going to be this fun little smash phrase 
of this warrants a fist pump. Oh, and see, I got a little bit off. So this is stays on. I would have to kind of scratch that. But what's great with this washi is that you get a whole nother set. And if I could be slower at this, I wouldn't rip it. Um, but you can see you get a ton of these little phrases. There we go. Now I got it running. You get a ton of these on this one roll. This roll is so nice and thick, you guys. And washi tape is really inexpensive. So if you mess up, it's really not a big deal. Just grab another piece. That's what scrapbooking is all about, right? We all make mistakes. Um, but then, if I had gotten ink on this, I could have just peeled it off, and I can go back to my stamping, okay? Um, you can stamp, if you have shaped stamps, you can add those, again, to any type of washi. So I could do just a fun, um, organic kind of looking washi with this lace. And I could stamp any type of little shape on here. Maybe I have another matching doily and I could go in between. Um, maybe I have a different word from a different set that isn't on one of these little rollers. Okay, and technique number seven is journaling on washi tape. So if you don't like the way that stamps work out or if they don't work out for you, like they didn't for me, you might wanna just journal and do your own handwriting on washi tape. And again, I'm just going to show you here because there's some really fun ways. Um, let's just say that today is Monday and the date, we're still in April. My goodness, I can't believe it. It's going by too fast. And the date I believe is the 29th. So let's just say that we journaled on this today, just like so. Now if I have a picture and I want to add a subject or a person or something like this, uh, I could do, and I'm using a permanent Sharpie, you guys, a fine tip Sharpie, uh, just because, again, washi tape is kind of slick, and I'm not sure that anything else will permanently stick to this if it's water-based, so I really want an alcohol-based or a Sharpie type of situation, and let's just say I went to Disneyland, uh, I think I went, golly, I'm going to date myself, but I think I went when I was 18, so I'm going to put that I went in the year 2000. Okay, so there's my date, my place, and maybe I attach that to a Disneyland layout. But you can kind of see how you can write anything on a month. Um, you can even come down here and just say, so happy your dot dot dot, and you can finish if you have a longer strip of washi. So it can become a journaling area um, just by using a Sharpie a lot of different techniques and ways that you can journal on your washi depending on what type of pattern you have. So again, just play with your washies, experiment with them, write things down, and as long as you're using something permanent, you can get a really fun effect on any layout card or project. The eighth way to washi that I want to show you today is how to make a hinge out of washi tape for some hidden journaling or some additional photos on your layout um, or just some a fun interactive element. Uh, these can work great for mini books, uh, gift cards that you're giving, um, anything of that nature. So I happen to have done a hinged section with washi on this layout. And so down here, this is a little interactive piece that has a photo on the top, but you'll notice I have so many photos on my layout, I didn't have anywhere to journal. So by simply putting a piece of washi tape to adhere this, I can now flip it up and I can interact with my journaling. And I actually did two sets of journaling. So I added another piece of washi tape and now I can flip this up and I can continue to read the journaling blocks underneath. So again, this is a way to get more photos on a single layout had I put photos underneath here. Or if you put too many photos on a layout and you suddenly find you have no room for journaling, you might want to add some journaling underneath a hinged element on your layout. So as simple as this looks, I'll still show you. Uh, you can do it where the largest element that you have on your page is on top and you're hiding your smaller elements behind or you can put your smallest element on top and hinge it with a piece of washi. 
You can decide how long you want the washi to be, whether you want torn edges on the washi, or whether you want to clean cut them. Maybe you want to cut them as a flag um, so that they're more banner style. Um, but essentially, you can put several pieces of washi onto a few elements. And so for this example, I'll just cut little pennant corners out of each end so that you can see the different effects. So sorry guys, I ripped my washi here and then I'm just cutting little imperfect pennants. And then I'm just going to add this right over top. Okay, so now I'm even layering my washi here, but now you can see can flip up the striped piece and write something or showcase a photo here. And I can flip up the second piece and write something or showcase a photo here. Or I can back any type of plain cardstock with a photo and journal down here or vice versa. Same here. And then I can have a photo or journaling bit right there. And it makes it fun and interactive. You can add this to, a, again, a card, a layout, a project life pocket even. So get creative with it and using washi for a hinge is a great, great tip. Way to washi number nine is to create a ruffle for a fun, frilly, and girly page. So I'd like to show you a ruffle here that I created on a page about my daughter. And all I did was take a long strip of washi and essentially folded it over onto itself in parts and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that on this scrap piece of paper. But as you can see, it just kind of creates this dimensional, raised, frilly ruffle on this fun, girly little layout. You can make your ruffle as long or as short as you want, depending on whether you're trying to just uh, put it on the bottom of a section of photo or whether you wanna go across your entire 12 by 12. But I recommend starting a little bit off the page and just pressing down on a nonstick surface so that you get a little bit of a grip on your paper. And then you're just going to fold this right back on itself. And it doesn't have to be really precise. And then you're gonna grab and press it in front of the pleat just so you grab the paper again and then fold it back on itself. And my pleats are not going to be perfect. They're not going to be even all the way down this line. I can guarantee you that. Uh, if you want them to be that perfect, I suggest not using this technique. <laughs> Buy something that's a ruffle and that's fluffy. This is kind of meant to be a little bit more messy, a little bit organic, uh, a little bit freestyle. So don't be afraid of it. Play with it. Uh, and as you do more and more of these, you might become quite a bit more adept at it and able to really knock them out fast and make them pretty precise. But as you can see, I'm just folding and sticking it on itself and making sure that some of my sticky washi adheres to the paper foundation that I'm using. And the result is that I'm getting this really fun and probably not straight because I'm working upside down. But I'm getting this really fun border and this really fun ruffle. Okay, and I'll just pull this up so you can see it. I'm gonna just fold this end of my washi right over, but there's my ruffle. And I can kind of rough it up if I want. I can leave it laying flat if that's what you like. I can even try and pull it back on itself. You can kind of scrunch and bend these, get it a little bit messy. However, whatever your style is, whatever you like. But that way you add a little bit of dimension and it's another really great way to washi. The tenth way you can washi is by using any style of washi tape as a border. Uh, right here in this layout sample, you can see that there is this black striped washi right underneath the photo mounted on the pattern paper. And it is a bit translucent, so you can see the pattern paper through it, but it adds a really nice accent, very linear, and adds to the layout. Here's a fun layout as well with a border below the photo to anchor it to the bottom. 
And in this mini book, there are fun numbers about a day in the life. So first day, second day, third day of the week, who knows? But either way, it's a really cute way to reference a theme in a border format. And then there's a series of cards where a border was used. So you can see a gray washi border here in the chevron. You can see a double washi border here, again in the chevron stripes. I also use the same chevron stripes here for continuity in my card collection. And I didn't take them all the way to the end of the card this time. I did kind of rip them about two thirds of the way, three quarters of the way. And then there is a border running behind this fun layered element on this particular card. Okay, and then I'd like to go through the samples again and I have some additional ones that will show you our 11th and 12th way to washi. Number 11 is to create a background from washi tape. And the way that I did that was again using my continuity throughout my cards and using the same gray and teal chevron washies. I just went in and I nearly wall to wall bordered this, the washi together in a pattern, in an alternating pattern. And by the time I threw all of my embellishments on top of it, it created a really fun background effect. So you can do this again on a card or a layout. And the twelfth way to washi is to make a frame. And so again, for continuity through my cards, same two washies, but this time I just ripped them in small little bits and I created a frame for this card for my Mother's Day sentiment and embellishment to stick out. Another great example of a frame, ironically enough using the same washi but by a different designer, is going around the entire layout. So taking simply four long strips of washi and going around the outside of your layout. Some other fun things I'd like to draw your attention to on this layout where we've used washi is not only did we use it as a border, which you saw before, but we journaled in white pen. So that's an example of journaling on your washi. Here are the little flags the pennant flags created using just some straight sticks and washi tape. Here is a ruffle that was configured into a flower. So this designer actually was able to make an entire cute washi element as a focal point for her page using the ruffle technique. And if you look really, really closely, you can see a few places where she also punched the washi directly out using a small punch and she has mounted it here on this flag and here as her button topper. And over here on this flag. Coming back to our border layout as well, another designer also covered her naked clothespins. And these are actually ones that had a design on one side of them that she did not like, so she flipped them over and washied the back side, the naked side, with a really fun design and used those on her page. And again, in this example of a ruffled border, you can also see the banner that I hand created. And that was our way to washi number one. Was a fun banner. And here again on this sample layout, there's covered clothespins again. And I actually punched out this top portion from cardstock using a free floating butterfly punch. And I put washi tape on the back cardstock, um, excuse me, the back patterned sheet of paper in the places where I wanted to highlight some of the butterflies. 
So I just did patterned washi over patterned paper and then layered punched cardstock over the top and got a really cool effect with my washi. And that's your 12 ways to washi from scrapbook.com.